Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day 17 of the 30-day Body, Mind, and Spirit Challenge. I am Peter Shank of ModernDayMystic.com. And today, I just want to give you some words of inspiration to keep you going. We are now past the halfway mark. And, you know, you have probably watched dozens of hours of our videos that we have put out. And, you know, you're, you're doing it. You're making change. Even if you gravitate towards one, two, or three of us, and you start implementing the changes, the techniques, and the magic that we all bring to the table. Remember what I said in the very beginning. When the body, mind, and spirit are out of alignment, your life cannot be optimized. Okay, And when you're working on one of the pillars, it starts to bring everything into balance. It's not, it's not about having a ripped six-pack. It's not about being enlightened, and we'll talk about that one another day. It's not about you know moving your mind to that PhD level. It's a, it's a constant work, right? You work at it, and as you work at it, you're bringing them into balance, but you have to start somewhere. And you know the, the, the path to bring all of these into alignment is just that it's a path okay we all know people that have, that have you know these amazing bodies we know when we know people that have these amazing minds and we know these uh, so-called enlightened people that have these amazing kindred spirits about them okay but the other two might be lacking or one more might be lacking it's a constant work effort right when you're working towards them you are on the path and it's all about being on the path okay there is no end result it's always constantly bettering yourself doing acts of kindness eating nutritiously working out on your body right an act of kindness falls right into the spirit pillar. Working on your body falls into the body. And in studying and watching these videos, believe it or not, the vibration that comes from, from these videos is to the nth degree. That is all vibrating. You know, you've never seen anything like what this group has put together. And you have to stay the course. You, you know, this is up on YouTube. You can go out and watch it as many times as you want. And, you know, you... you gravitate towards what works for you what work what works for one person might not work for the other remember the fab diet in the new year that lasts three days the gym equipment that you purchase that you now hang your scarves scarves and hats on and the gym membership that we all get and we don't do anything with these videos are almost like a diary a collective consciousness of six or seven professionals that are absolutely top-notch in their game and you know it's all again it's all our hopes and inspirations that we can better your lives in ways that you have never never seen before again day 17 of the 30-day body mind and spirit challenge i'm peter shank from moderndaymystic.com get out there and rock it thank you And good morning, Reno Soriano here, the Conscious Health Alchemist, day 17 on your 30-day Holistic Health Challenge. Now, uh, I'm going to hit you with some super secrets today uh, on what I call holistic slimming, you know, to get, in, to get fit, to get in shape. And, uh, well, I think you've tried all the common <laughs> practices out there, limiting your fat and calories and doing cardio and doing all these things and the results have spoken loud and clear not only for you but for hundreds of millions of people worldwide uh, those practices do not get you results because they are erroneous and they're following erroneous philosophies I don't know where they came from but the facts are uh, as of 40 50 years ago when health officials started saying to limit your fat and calories and telling you fat was bad uh, that's when more people started becoming more overweight and throughout the decades the graph keeps going up and up and up and now we are at epidemic levels and it's going to continue to rise because that information is hogwash it's um, preposterous uh, some of these principles that are being taught out there and it's being done on purpose and so you need to empower yourself all I say is let's look out there and well 65 to 70 percent of the human population at least in the United States is overweight and this includes children now so it's your choice if you want to continue to believe that grunge. Uh, the results have spoken loud and clear, and I've quite have had enough of uh, having people put themselves on this hamster wheel where they go nowhere. 
and actually contributes to the gaining of excess weight. All you have to do is look at people, look at yourself, how many people do you know, and including yourself, have gone on the diets and these fitness programs and the results have been, I, look, I don't know, be honest with yourself. All I know is that uh, for me, uh, most of these philosophies are counter health and they're actually doing the opposite. So you might be a little bit more open-minded to maybe uh, learning a new process for inputting nutrition and I'm going to give you some super secrets right now, so pay attention. Okay, so fat is not going to put fat on your body. I explained this in another video. Preposterous philosophy, I don't know where it came from, but uh, it's actually, uh, if you have a good supply of healthy fats coming in throughout the days, uh, it's actually going to help keep you slim. So uh, in the first week, I sent you a download which is called my perfect plate formula. That perfect plate formula is fantastic. Why? Because it actually, in and of itself, will help you to start slimming down. Now, if you remember, it's a graph. It has a shape of a plate, and I recommend to have half of your plate be vegetables, okay, at all times. All main meals, half of your plate vegetables. So if you take your plate, split it in half, that should be all vegetables, whether it's steamed vegetables or a combination of steamed and some raw. That's called fiber. Plant has cellulose and fiber. Fiber helps keep you regular. Fiber helps keep you slim, okay? Uh, and so, uh, and it's going to help actually to stimulate your metabolism. So the, one of the simplest principles is have half of your plate be vegetables, please. Okay, that's one of the simplest ways. The second one is you need to start bringing in the healthy fats, all different kinds of healthy fats throughout the days, every meal, not just once in a while or when you feel like it. You need to start re-educating your body to take this fat in because the second you start inputting clean fats, you know what's going to happen. Your metabolism is going to activate. Your enzyme levels are going to activate. Your hormones are going to activate. Your body's going to start now purging toxins because your body communicates via uh, you know neurotransmitters, but your neurotransmitters and all other communication needs fat as the transport mechanism it's the driving energy okay so you need fat and most people are so depleted of fat that the body doesn't know what to do because it's not receiving communication the number one thing you can do input the clean fat so the first recommendation I'm gonna do is when you wake up in the morning first thing is you're going to start taking a big spoonful of organic coconut oil now I've listed the brand in some of my other downloads it's called the coconut secret brand it's in a blue jar at Whole Foods go get it start taking one big spoonful every morning Oh boy, you're going to start revving up. Why? Because it's loaded with energy. Now, most people think that energy comes from consuming starches and sugars. That is a very low-level form of giving body energy. Why? Because sugars and starches burn really quickly and very fast. You don't want that. You want energy sources that, that are longer term. And fats are the greatest source of energy that there exists. Okay? And so uh, my thing is... Let's go for the fat for energy and let's start reducing the sugars and the starches. You don't want your body being acclimated to burning mainly glucose and sugars because once your body's uh, uh, you know addicted to that, then you're you know it's going to take more time now to try to do something else. So what I'm saying is let's slowly bridge you over to having your body use more fat for energy because that's going to be more sustaining and you're actually going to feel better. You're going to feel more well. Your brain's going to love it. Your brain needs all these fats for communication, for running all these information pieces up and down your spine, okay? So you need fat. So the first thing in the morning, big spoon of organic coconut oil. Uh, the second thing you can do throughout the day is incorporate some type of fat in your meals. Grapeseed oil is one of the best. Uh, macadamia nut oil, avocado oil. Put these on your you know, wild rice. Put these on your vegetables. You need to bring in the fats. It's going to bling you out. It's going to help communication. It's going to help your libido and uh, nerve, nerve transmitters. It's going to help your digestion and uh, what else? Illumination, your hair, skin. Get the fats coming in, okay? And one last practice is before you go to bed, I know this is going to sound weird, but miracles happen when people do this. Before you go to bed 10, 15 minutes before, take about a few slivers of pasture butter or grass-fed butter. Okay, yep, you're gonna take a few slivers of that, eat it plain, raw, and then go to bed. Number one, you're gonna sleep better because it's got tryptophan in it. And tryptophan, your brain loves tryptophan, it helps you to calm down, and your brain can actually produce melatonin and DHEA while you're sleeping. And then it's also gonna help to balance your body chemistry out, and it's gonna prepare you for the next day. It's also gonna help you to detox overnight. Did you get that? 
two simple practices, organic coconut in the morning, uh, butter in the evening before going to bed. I know these sound, what, what are you having me do? I recommend trying that for 10 days and watch what happens to your body. Very simple and watch what happens, the miracles that happen, not only in your physiology, but your mental and emotional well-being. Fat, by the way, connects you to higher sources, your higher faculties. Okay, it's called pineal gland. Your pineal gland needs constituents. It's fat-based, neurotransmitter based. If you're limiting your fat and calories, you're probably gonna stay overweight for the rest of your life and you're not gonna be able to connect to your higher powers. If you think I'm, I'm kidding, try for 10 days and watch what happens to uh, uh, your life and your spirituality. You know, I see people doing all these labors practices, trying to be spiritual and evolve and, and, and it's actually nutritionally based. You can actually expand by being aligned who you truly are, inputting the clean, uh, nutrition so you can align to your higher faculties it's actually much simpler to be a, a conscious spiritual being than what's being led to, what's being led to you to believe out there so try these simple practices get back to me uh, the results will speak for themselves I've already seen miracles happen with some of my clients um, the rest is up to you to follow or not uh, fat is king baby full of energy you'll see I'm Reno Suriano and remember healthy body happy soul Hey guys, Wendy Johns here and welcome back once again. I want to congratulate you guys because we're just a little bit past the halfway mark. Thank you so much for showing up and participating in this challenge. I so hope that all the information and techniques and knowledge are working for you already. So today I want to show you another physically relaxing, de-stressing technique that also brings into balance the hemispheres of the brain. Now, most of us already know that the left brain is responsible for the logical thinking and the problem solving, kind of black and white, and the right brain is more creativity, spirituality, the aha moments. But when we're one extreme or the other, which most of us, there's pretty much an, an imbalance there, we are um, extremes, uh, let's just say, invite the shadow. When we bring things into balance, that word is thrown around so much, but let me emphasize here, especially with the brain, when we bring it into balance, it creates an overall harmonious, harmonic field around us that it really changes our perception about reality. And of course, that will be reflected back to us. You've heard of the books, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are Ven From Venus. Well, that's how humanity has been and probably why the divorce rate is so high as it is. But Humanity is moving toward more of, a, more of like an integration of the two hemispheres of the whole. And, and we need to start with that intent to do that, which does bring on balance in our life in all areas. And once we focus on balancing the hemispheres of the brain, we have improved relationships. We have improved uh, uh, work. Just every area of our life is a step up. The more we engage in techniques that can relax the body, and allow us to engage and actually bring these two hemispheres into communication. Now, one of the best exercises other than the alternate nasal breathing that I have found is called whole brain posture. And it is integrated in some other uh, healing, modality, healing modalities. You may have heard of it, but it's very simple. It doesn't take that long. Again, we are bringing more calmness over the body, engaging the parasympathetic is what we want. And it's also Lighting up the corpus callosum, which is the tissue that connects the left and right brains, getting it humming, gets the communication going. I promise you'll see the difference if you make this a regular practice for yourself. So what you want to do is we're going to cross either leg over the other. So I'm doing right over left. Then we're going to cross our arms over as well. doesn't matter either way. And you can bring it up like this or you bring it down like this. And we're going to inhale. But as we inhale, we're going to put the tip of our tongue on the back of our two front teeth. Now this, again, when we cross one part of our body over the other, it gets communication going between the left and right hemispheres. That's what we want. We don't want polarization left or right. So we put the tongue behind the two front teeth. Inhale. Exhale. Do that a couple times. Let the body relax. You'll feel it relaxing. You'll also um, Please be aware that this is a good time to also lock some proactive ideas into the unconscious layers. And what I mean by that is when we're in this pose, we can say our I am's, whatever we choose to be. So if you have a day where you need more courage or you need more um, happiness or uh, what, more patience, 
whatever it is, start off your day with doing this. Or you can, if you're stuck, you know, in a light, put it in park for a minute and you can do this. Inhale. I am courage. I'm happiness. I am free. Say it in your mind or say it out loud. It does not matter. Say these positive affirmations while you're in this position and see if it doesn't make a difference in your life. It'll bring peace and more balance. That's what we all need for better and higher health. So thank you again for tuning in and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hi guys, we're back. Body, Mind, Spirit Challenge. Uh, my name is Jim Standish and we are on day 17. So yesterday we talked about the birth map and the concept that the moment you were born, if you were to take a picture in the sky of all the heavenly bodies, and this would be uh, all the heavenly bodies that are influencing you and your life experience here on planet Earth. Today, we're going to move into the destiny card system. Uh, the destiny card system is uh, extremely interesting. Um, very ancient system goes back to uh, goes back to Babylon. Uh, we know that it was used by the Egyptians in ancient Egypt, um, and it is a, uh, a, a tr really a tool for self understanding. Uh, a lot of astrologers like this system because it is so accurate, um, and it's really based on math. It's a mathematical system. Um, some people use it for divination purposes. I prefer not to. Um, for me, it's just it's it's just math, and um, I don't use it to like predict the future or anything like that. I like to concentrate on inherent strengths and potential weaknesses. So let's look at our strengths. So down below, there is a printout. There's a PDF. Um, there's a, a a link to a website, uh, and you can see uh, Robert Lee Camp's website, and he is the author. Of this book, Exploring the Little Book of Seven Thunders, and I'm not trying to hold it up so you can see it. Exploring the Little Book of Seven Thunders, and um, this is a very, very, very in-depth look at this destiny card system. So, for today's purposes, um, also in the PDF in the handout down below, there is a chart and there's a birth chart, and we're going to be looking up your birth card. And your birth card is is kind of like your your primary expression. It's it's what you came here to do. And again, we're looking for uh, potential strengths, um, ways that we can use inherent talents, things that that have been given to us innately, and that we can use them to enhance our lives. Tools, tips, and techniques to make your life awesome. So. Pull out the, the printout from down below, just pull up the PDF, look up your birth card. And we're going to expound a little bit on this more tomorrow. If you would like, in the website link, you can actually sign up for a course. And there's a free course, I, I forget how many days it is, like an 18-day course or something like that, that walks you through this entire system. Um, and, and what I'm trying to do is just expose you to this information. Um, it's Again, it's about self-transformation, self-understanding, and I think that you will find these tools, tips, and techniques um, really, really interesting, and I hope that it enhances your life as it has enhanced mine. So we will see you tomorrow, day 18, and we're going to dive into this just a little bit deeper on day 18. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you then. Hello, I'm Dr. Howard. Today we're going to talk about how much protein we should be eating. There's a PDF file that accompanies this talk, and I suggest that you, uh, when you finish all the other talks in this series that are being presented today, go back, pull the PDF file, and come back and listen to this again. Or skip this section and then come back with the PDF, because you're going to want to take a look at it. Right? While, you follow, while I talk and while you follow what I'm saying. Because we already talked about why you should not be eating too much protein. And the question comes in, how much protein should I eat? That's a good question. Because it's a lot less than most people think. On this PDF file, if you'll turn to the first table, which is the next the page after the introduction uh, header, uh, it tells you how much protein you should be eating for the day, but it tells you in funny units. Egg equivalent units, 6.28 grams of protein, 
is an egg equivalent unit. Now, why that? Craziest thing you ever heard, right? Well, it's not quite that crazy. The Most people don't know what a gram is, and 6.28 grams is just something you don't know about. Most people round it off to 6 grams, but it's uh, for, for those uh, eggs would give you an extra gram of protein. And that is significant, or it can be anyway for some people. And so I figured that people know what an egg is. And a large egg, the average size, ideal size, large chicken egg is 6.28 ounces of protein. And I said, okay, everybody knows what an egg is, knows approximately how big a chicken egg is. And uh, we're going to call protein in egg equivalent units. It makes it very convenient because not everything is in all your proteins in meat, cheese, fish, and nuts. You got a lot of protein in vegetables. Everything has protein. Even fruit has protein. Orange has some protein. Not a whole lot, but it has some, and it has to be counted. When you're figuring out what you need, you really don't want to overdo it. I've, re I've gone on why over that why. Uh, 4.3 ounces of calories has as much protein as a half an egg. That's a lot of protein. Uh, 1.35 uh, ounces of black beans has as much uh, protein as a half an egg. And I suggest, I th I'll check, but I believe that's cooked black beans. Black turtle beans. In fact, I'm sure it is. And so you look at the table, it gives you your height, it gives you your activity level, and tells you about how many equivalent eggs a day you would need. Well, you say, why don't I just eat the eggs? Well, you can eat the eggs, you just have all protein and you're going to do yourself in eventually. You're going to hurt yourself. The, uh, but in the next page, if you eat three meals a day, that's not a whole lot of protein. The protein from three eggs uh, would be for a person prime prime of life, typical activities, five foot six inches tall, three and a third eggs worth of protein, eggs equivalent, for somebody six feet tall. Uh, that's not a lot. And so if you're eating a meal, maybe a third of that will come from uh, your meat or cheese or whatever, and the rest is going to come from your vegetables. Grains. Grains have a lot of protein. They really do. They just have a lot more uh, uh, carbs. However, something like uh, pasta made from icorn flour is balanced. You don't have to eat that with anything except itself and something to give you soluble fiber. And we'll go talk about soluble fiber in another talk. It's very important and it's enough to warrant a short talk. If you have what's called a carb limit, and we'll talk about that in a minute, you might need four meals a day. And uh, there's a table for that. I have a carb limit. I have diabetes because of my insulin resistance. If I eat more than 50 grams of carbs at a meal, my blood sugar goes crazy. If I eat less than 50 grams of carbs total, my blood pressure's, my blood sugar is fine. So my blood sugar is going to go crazy if I eat too much. I'm not going to eat too much. I'm going to eat an extra meal during the day. And there's another table in here that you might find useful. It says, well, if I eat this much protein, how much carbs do I need to balance it? So I have protein carb balance so that I can minimize the effect that it would have on my blood sugar. Normal healthy kid is going to be able to eat just about anything they want, and the blood sugar is going to stay pretty pretty stable. It's not going to go sky high like mine would. But when they start getting damaged, it starts going sky high, and this is what's happening with our kids these days. For some reason, they're getting damaged. And once it starts not controlling itself, when you stress it by putting too much carbs or too much protein, you have to do it manually. And so this table sort of tells you how to do it manually. We've already said why you don't want too much protein. And if you don't have a lot of excess protein and you have not a lot of carbs because they have to balance this non-excessive amount of protein, 
then you're going to have to get your calories from someplace else, and that's going to be fat. And we're going to have a whole talk on fat uh, probably next week. But meanwhile, we have some tables in here telling you how many calories you're going to need to get from fat. And it's not that hard. It's not rocket science. I'm going to suggest you use coconut oil. It has the minimum. It has the car. The yeah. It has the omega fats, which are inflammatory and non-inflammatory and fats. The inflammatory ones, the omega six fats, start a fire inside your body. It's called inflammation. It's supposed to do that to clear out the debris, to put new cells in, to make changes so that you can. Uh, re make repairs. You need the omega-3 fats to go put the fire out. So it's, it's taken away the damaged cells and you now put lay down new, new cell, healthy cells. And so we need them, but we don't need them in great amounts. You know, when you need maybe uh, 50 or 100 or 200 omega-6s to start a fire at a meal, you don't need 2,000 or 10,000 of them. You'll have a volcano. You'll burn the whole stadium down. And this is what we're doing. And so we're going to talk about that in another talk. You just want to know that we want thing, everything in moderation. But you're going to need fat, and there is healthy fat. Well, there's one healthy vegetable fat, and it's not olive oil. It's coconut oil. And if you get grass, have grass-fed cattle... The fat from from the from grass fed uh, steers, uh, it's called beef tallow, is healthy because there's an omega six fat CLA that happens to be healthy. It's a trans fat, no less, and it's healthy, and it's because it's anti inflammatory. And we have other anti inflammatory pro foods. And uh, we have butter from grass-fed cows that has CLA. But you also have foods like turmeric, and they've been used for centuries. They're used uh, in cultures where they might have uh, infl inflammatory foods, have a little bit too much omega-6s in the diet. And these spices like turmeric, garlic, there's a lot of spices. The normal seasonings we use in cooking, most of them have anti-inflammatory properties. At the cooking levels, you take too much of them, and then some of them lose their properties. They don't cook. They're not as good. They cook, but you put too much in, it's not as good as less. The normal cooking levels they found, like for rosemary, are very healthy. And they lose their properties if you put too if you use too much, and they lose don't have the properties if you don't have enough. So you want to just use normal amounts you would in cooking, and that's correct. That's the amount you should be using, and you get all the advantages of all the nice things that they have. So you're going to the nice things about trying to use fat to give you the proper amount of calories is it's so caloric dense. That you don't have to make changes. You want your weight to go down, it's a little too high, even if it's a lot too high. Just drop a tablespoon a day out of your uh, of fat, out of your meal. Don't cut way back. You're going to need a lot of fat in order to keep your calories up because you're not going to get them from your protein and carbs. They need to be in balance and you don't want to hurt yourself by too much protein. You're going to use fat. And there's been a big smear campaign in this country about using fat, don't use this fat, it's bad for you, use these fats. Turns out those fats are terrible. Coconut oil is about the safest fat you can use. It's healthy. It protects you against infections. It can be used by people with gallbladder problems because it doesn't hit the gallbladder, it doesn't hit the small intestines, it goes... You eat the coconut oil, it's absorbed right from the stomach, goes into the bloodstream, goes to the liver where it's needed. It's good for your brain. You give coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil, to people who are starting to show signs of Alzheimer's, and guess what? The signs of Alzheimer's go away. 
They just need to eat a tablespoon or two, just straight, a couple times a day, and they do much better, and they think much clearer. And people uh, who are starting to get uh, signs of cognitive decline, like you go to the refrigerator and figure, don't even remember why you came into the room, doesn't happen too often, but it does every once in a while. Start eating some coconut oil. You'd be surprised. A lot of those problems will just disappear. So it has all sorts of beneficial effects. And if you will cook with it, by the way, you can't do high temperature cooking with extra virgin coconut oil. You can boil stuff in it. You can do some low temperature saute even. High temperature, you're going to need a specially treated coconut oil. It doesn't have any flavor anymore. Uh, if you have to do that, and I use that, I use it for sauteing uh, too, because I never know when it's going to get a little too hot accidentally. Uh, get the expeller pressed, and you're going to probably be in good shape. Anyway, I have some tables telling you how much calories. If you balance your pro your carbs and protein, then you just need to add the fat calories. Now, fat calories isn't just from the fat. The ca fat calories we're counting in these tables are total for the meal. Because the foods, when I add the carb calories and the protein calories together, it's for a food, I'm not counting the fat. I don't know how much fat is in that piece of food. I have an idea how much might be there. But when you're, you're not exactly sure. Don't have to be. You just take some fat, use approximately the right amount, watch your, if your weight's going up or down to check your weight. Just weigh yourself every morning with about the same amount of clothes on. It's very simple. Check your lowest weight for the week. Next week, check your lowest weight for the week. See if it's going, if the lowest weight for the week is going up or down. If it's going up, drop off a tablespoon of fat out of the amount that you're cooking with and everything else. If it's going down and you're happy, let it go down. When it you want it to level off, add a little more fat. If the level's off too soon, take a little more fat off. It's very simple. You just reach in, scoop out some fat, drop it in the pan when you're cooking. Make sure you get the fat. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. You have to have the fat when you're keeping a minimum amount of protein and you're balancing your carbs to that minimal amount of protein. You don't want carbs to go over, normally go over, below 120 grams of carbs a day. Most of the time, you're not going to be in pro have a problem. You will have a problem if you're going to, on a ketogenic diet. That requires very little carbs and lots and lots of fat. The diet I'm talking about is going to be 50 to 80 percent fat. Ketogenic diet is a very special diet that they're using to cure cancer. At least that's what I've been told. I can't say it's a cancer cure. It doesn't cure all cancers. There's some that are resistant to it. Talk to your doctor if you have a problem. But don't, but you have to have about 80% of your calories from fat, uh, somewhere between 10 and 40% of, or maybe 50% of your calorie, of your uh, grams, I'm sorry, 10 or 50 grams of carbs a day. I know people on this diet, they're down at 10 grams of carbs a day, some of them. Uh, they do very well. Their body switches from burning carbs to burning fat, and it works. It's not something I recommend. Most people don't realize they got to keep their protein down to a minimum and really live off the fat, and your body's perfectly capable of doing it. Long term, I don't know. I recommend my diet for long term. Uh, my diet's not for everybody. I have a friend who lives on fruit. My diet would make him sick. He knows that. His diet would make me sick. We both know that. But we do very well. I know people on a ketogenic diet. They do very well. I've talked to people on a blood type diet. They seem to do pretty well too. A lot of people don't do well on that diet. There's, there's a diet for everybody that people are going to do well on. But what you're not going to do well on are the diets that the uh, food industry has been pushing in this country and the diets that the medical profession has been pushing because they don't want to look at food combinations. They want to look at just individual foods. And some of the doctors, like Dr. McCullough, are doing great in what they're teaching. And some of the doctors 
well, I have some questions about what they're teaching. Let's let's put that. But they most of them don't know any better. That's another and that's another talk to topic. So anyway, there fine, there's a final table in this uh, download, and that shows a whole bunch of foods. How much of each of those foods has a half an egg of protein? So that you can get some idea of what you're doing. And in the final column there, it tells you the average carbs, the time of typical fiber, uh, soluble fiber, and we're going to have a whole talk, a little talk on that. And it tells you something called UNBC, which is a table, an index I came up with called unbalanced carbs. And the negative are the protein donors, the positive are the carb donors. You balance them, and they, the numbers go in proportion to the to the particular food. So if a given food, let's say uh, 0.6 ounces of raw cashews has a UNBC of minus 6, then 0.3 ounces of cashews would have a UNBC of minus 3. 3.3 ounces of Brussels sprouts has a UNBC of minus 3. Brussels sprouts are a protein donor. 3.3 ounces of Brussels sprouts has as much protein as 0.6 ounces of cashews, which is, they have a half an egg worth of protein. You would balance that. Well, let's see. 3.6 ounces of cooked white sticky rice has 10 and 3, yeah, 3 quarters. 10 and 3 quarters UNBC. It can balance quite a bit of cashews or quite a bit of uh, greens. You wouldn't expect white sticky rice to be good for you. Well, it is. We're going to talk about that a little bit when we talk about soluble fiber because it turns out if you have enough soluble fiber, it, it doesn't matter if you've taken the good stuff or what we think is the good stuff out of the rice. It turns out that white rice may be healthier than the brown rice these days. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that when we talk about the soluble fiber too. Meanwhile, God bless you. See you tomorrow. Hey everyone, Donna Whittington here with Peace, Love and Bliss Coaching. And today I wanna to talk about inhibitions. What inhibits you? So I want you to take some time and think about this exercise. Today, when we talk about inhibitions, what are the types of things that inhibit you, whether you are single or with your partner? Remember, the things that we're doing for this 30-day challenge, that's, it's for you or your partner, you and or your partner, I should say, if you're single you should be practicing these things as well because if you are wanting a relationship this is going to be absolutely incredible practice maybe even open you up for relationships so when you are in that relationships you know how you feel because you've been exploring with all the information that we've been talking about over these 30 days so Going back to inhibitions, what are some of the things that keep you from exploring? A lot of that stuff is from our childhood. And in our childhood, it could come from our parents. It could come from friends. But it's usually something that is very unconscious and something that possibly could have happened to us years ago that we might have had a bad experience and from the bad experience we're like oh I'm never going to do that again so i would like to challenge you to think about the things that inhibit you and inhibit you sexually so when you are with your partner are there things that your partner would like to do that you are uncomfortable with and more than likely there will be some things that you're like just not down for and there's some things that you might be down for and some of those things could just flat out no. Now, you will not know that 
unless you communicate and possibly even try it. So I'm going to challenge you to let down your guard and explore, explore each other. If you're single, explore your own body. There is no reason why you can't explore your own body if you um, are not in a relationship. You should be exploring your own body to know what feels good, what doesn't feel good. These are important things. So when you are in a relationship, and if it's an intimate relationship, if you go down that path, then you are aware of the things that excite you, that arouse you, and things that just do not turn you on. So if you have a partner who is interesting, is interested in doing something totally out of your comfort zone, first things first, talk about it. If it's something that you cannot even talk about, you can definitely seek personal counseling. Um, you can set up personal sessions with me. You can always reach me via my email, peace, love, and bliss coaching at gmail.com or use an outside person. Talk to someone you're comfortable with and you trust. And, you know, the professionals, we're never going to judge you for the things that you want to do. The things that feel good to you that you might think that doesn't feel good to someone else. But um, for your inhibitions, things that you would like to try, again, whether you're single or whether you are with a partner, it is good for you to explore that in your mind, especially for you single folks, explore it in your mind, explore why it is something that you know, you're not comfortable with, or if it's something that you would like to be comfortable with, this is a great time to start exploring. For those of you who are in a relationship, explore with your partner. Talk to them. You know, we talked about trust the other day. This is where trust comes in. You've got to trust your partner. Allow them. Allow them to work with you on this issue. There's nothing worse than being in a relationship and just completely shutting down. So this is where we open up. Even if you have to take it extremely slow, that is fine. But give yourself a chance. Test out the waters. You might find that once you let your guard down and your inhibitions down, you might find that there are some things that you absolutely enjoy. So give it a thought. Talk to your partner. If you're single, think about the things that you would like to try and um, see how you can do some of the things that you would like to do or that you would like someone else to do to you See how you can do that for yourself. And again, if you are single and would like some more coaching, connect with me, peace, love, and bliss coaching at gmail.com. Let's talk about it. So I look forward to chatting with you again in our next video. Again, Donna Whittington, peace, love, and bliss coaching at gmail.com. You can connect with me on Facebook on the Love Connections page. I also have an Instagram page, Peace, Love, and Bliss. Follow me there. Bring your questions. Let's talk about dropping your inhibitions. This is great work, especially for those of you who are in relationships. Could even bring the relationship a lot closer. Donna Whittington signing off. Hope you're having a fabulous day. What if all the thoughts in your head aren't even yours? Would you like to stop the monkey mind and put an end to the mind chatter? I challenge you for 30 days to continue asking, who does this belong to?
is this mine? Unless you are consciously choosing to think a thought, then it's probably not yours. And if it lightens up at all or goes away, then it's definitely not yours. Who does this belong to? Is this mine? For every thought and emotion that you have that arises. And what is possible when you create consciously and think consciously rather than being run by those thoughts in the mind and those emotions and heaviness that perhaps aren't even yours. Thank you, bless you, and namaste.